The camera, Kelly. Alrighty then, Romans chapter 8, and um, we're going to look at verses 14 through 17 at first, and then we're going to move from verse 17, which to me... Uh, is sort of the halfway point of, of the point that's trying to be made in Romans 8. <clears throat> uh, as I was praying for this class, um, I found myself praying that the Holy Spirit would be here as Eliezer sent on a mission to bring back a bride out of this class instead of just the Holy Spirit move and we get something and we go, oh, praise God, I'm deeper, I'm smarter, I'm better. <clears throat> but for him to move in such a manner that <clears throat> he would be at work bringing back to the son uh, the thing that he desires and the thing that the father has set for him by sending Eliezer in the first place. <clears throat> so I'm asking you to consider that in your heart and to consider before the Lord in your approach to these classes because the, um, the information that we'll be given here is, <clears throat> is that which will um, prepare um, Rebecca for it was Rebecca, right? I, I can never. They should. They should never start with an R. I get them mixed up with Randy because it starts with an R. <clears throat> uh, Rebecca, to change her from one, a foreigner in Haran, which is outside of the land to to a journey that would bring her into not just conformity but bring her into the heart of the Lord if you can understand the, the difference conformity in one sense is just something that happens to us but that conformity is exactly what he desires in his heart so it's not just about her conforming. It's not just about her focusing on herself. It's about wh exactly what is it that's in his heart. And to, to find that out, Rebecca represented the bride, which is, which is many, not brides, but many who are made one as a bride, that that she represents all of us, and yet she represents not all of us at every given moment, but those of us who are at that moment uh, seeking to be taken out of Haran, but not, I want out, but rather I want to go into the land, and then I want to go deeper than into the land. I want to go into Isaac's heart. <clears throat> and so um, I know my heart, my heart, is that I, I, I refuse to approach this as a, just a teacher in a Bible school. May the Holy Spirit speak to me and bring me and, and show me Isaac's face, make that full trip. Anyway, the things that we're going to be dealing with are the, the elements that will be required in becoming his kind. We're about to start that. <clears throat> uh, we're in Christ. 
we're saved, woohoo! But now there's going to be a change and we're going to begin to see that. So verse 14 through 17 <clears throat> leads up to verse 17. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. All right, so it's speaking of being in the family, and uh, I'm sure you remember the verses before this. You're in the family because the family's in you. Um, verse uh, 9, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, of, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Um, now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if, the, if Christ be in you, and so we notice all of this particularly emphasizing in you now, not in Christ, but in you. And that settles it. You're children of God. You're in the family. You're, you're, you're in the family because the family's in you. And they've chosen you and me as their abode. Um, but it's going to move from abode to, sim to simply be in a house to beyond that, what the Spirit has in mind. All right, so, um, so it's set that up so far in Romans 8. It's, been, it's taken the time to do that, and it has emphasized this thing about being in you, and then now it's saying, and, and you know, if children, then heirs, and uh, is uh, uh, showing this relationship um, like verse uh, 16, the Spirit himself bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. <clears throat> All right. Now, I want to address part of verse 17 that I'm not sure if we've all ever recognized this or not, uh, and that is that it is actually presenting a dividing point in verse 17. It is, it is setting everything up to this point on the side of children and everything on the other side of it on the side of sons. And the wording will be very specific from here on and the emphasis and the particular wording that will completely depart from the kind of wording that he would give to children. It is, it is now I want to really bring you in in a real way, but, but when I say a real way, I don't necessarily mean a practical way yet, because that's coming in the previous chapters, but in a real way where you can discern the difference of words and of meanings and of things. And so uh, verse 17, I think, is, is excellent for doing that, because I believe that we, we believe verse 17 is just saying one thing and that the wording is just the same thing when it's not. It is cut right in half, that, that, that verse. So here we go. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and also joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be glorified with him. Now, it has set forth from Romans 1 until the middle or the first part of verse 17 that if you're a child of God, if you're born again, it's a free gift, right? Chapter 3, chapter 4, anybody remember all of that? And, and it's a free gift. But, but if this was just one phrase wording it's slightly different, but it meaning the same thing, then why would he add in, if so be that you suffer with him? Why would it add that in? Do we even know it had it in? Do we even realize that that would challenge everything that has to do with all this being by grace? Okay? And um, 
And as I said, the wording is going to change now, and I'll probably have in my notes here, but it's going to change from, from dealing with children to sons, or it's going to change from dealing with children to bring them into being sons of God in the image of Christ. <clears throat> okay? So, um, uh, let me just read from my notes because how many more classes do we have? How many more night? Three. Counting tonight, right? Okay, not much. Well, I will, uh, I will finish the book by the third class. All right. We are heirs. We are joint heirs. One is an heir not because he's joined, but because God joined with us. You're just an heir, and if, a, and if, you know, if, chil if children, an heir. That's the word. If children, then heirs. Okay? But then the wording goes, we are joint heirs with Christ, if so be. And that's conditional. That's not the same thing. It's two separate things. One relating to children or immature ones or, or born ones and the other one relating to sons and the if you want to check it out in the like strongs or anything else the greek word for children is tiknon and this same same uh, contrast is used over in galatians chapter four um, where it uses the word sons in contrast to children or children in contrast to sons and uh, the, the word for children in the Greek is tignon, and the word for sons is huios. If you were a Greek person reading this in the Greek, you would see it's talking about two different things. It's literally two different definitions of things, okay? So, we are heirs because we're born into it. We are joint heirs because we suffer with him. Okay. If children, then heirs. The conclusion that we are heirs is based on the fact that we are children. If children, then heirs. That's what it says. This is the case all over the world. If you're a child and your parents die, basically they, you're an heir, right? Why? Because you're a children. <laughs> Paul proved the reality of the adoption into God's family based from the testimony of two things their own spirit and that of the Spirit of God. They cry, Abba, Father. Instead of Mama, they cry, Dad, Dad. They are not heirs because of salvation from hell or salvation from punishment or not even because of earning it. It is simply the fact that if children, then heirs. Verse 17, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, heirs of God, okay? Up to this point, everything was about children and being in the family, but in the middle of verse 17, the emphasis changes from children to sons. The key that turns everything in Romans 8 is that this contrast between, is, is this contrast between children and sons. All right, so, uh, whether Rebecca realizes it or not, the Holy Spirit has showed up at her house for one purpose. Not to say, you're everything he wants, but you're going to take a journey with me and I'll bring you into everything he wants. Amen? And so everything doesn't, we say everything rests with the Holy Spirit. It does. But when it comes to becoming the bride or when it comes to becoming sons in the image of Christ, when it comes to that, these are issues of, of the heart. Always with the Lord on the deepest level of things, they are issues of the heart. They are always issues of the heart. God made it so. God made us to have that capacity. Other animals and stuff don't have those kind of issues. God does, and God wants us to have those kind of issues in relationship with him. Um, so if we are born ones, children, 
because that's also one of the sort of definitions of it. If we're born ones, then we are in fact heirs of God. And also we can become joint heirs with Jesus if we go through sufferings as a son. If we accomplish sufferings as a son, then we, the only possible way to do that is being adjoined to the heir, being a joint heir, joined heir. That's the only possible way. You're, you're, as a child, you're just an heir. What did I do to earn this? You're just, you're born in the family. You're a kid, and when I die, you get it. Oh, good. I'm going to spend it on drugs. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't matter, does it? Ultimately, that doesn't matter because your salvation is of grace. But if so be, um, if we are born ones, then we are in fact heirs of God. And also we can become joint heirs with Jesus if we go through sufferings as a son, which is only possible not by being an heir, which is which, a child or a son? Child. child. But by being a joined heir, joined to the heir then we can go through these things in the same spirit because we're joined to him. Amen? Which is not theology at all. Joined is not theology at all. L to God, the Levites, the joined ones, wasn't theology to him at all. It had nothing to do with theology in his heart. The study of God, theology. You you'll never... You'll never be able to dissect his heart with a scalpel and find these things. You'll only be able to enter into his heart and find these things. All right, so we are joint heirs if, in fact, we suffer with him. Okay, did you notice that? We're heirs of God, which is three in one, amen? Heirs of who? Because that's... Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But we are joint heirs with Jesus if indeed we suffer with H-I-M, one, singular, not the tr no longer the Trinity, no longer addressing that. That's for, the, that's for the children. This is a joint thing with Christ, Christ crucified. And it requires that we are able to dissect the scriptures in such a manner that we can determine Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that we can determine who this relates to so we can relate to them. Amen. Instead of just go, well, it doesn't matter if it says God, it says Almighty God, you know, and holy, 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 you know. And we're just so religious it makes him sick, you know. Instead of knowing Jesus, I am an heir with you and the Father and the Son, but I want to I wanna ante that up. I want to be joined to you and go into something with you that requires joining, but will also bring about something that you want out of us, being after our kind. <clears throat> okay, so we are joint heirs if, in fact, we suffer with him but so that we may also be glorified with him. The subject is now upon duplication of the son in the form of sons. Now, if you know anything about Romans from this point on, I mean this point right here, if you know anything about Romans 8 from this point on, and you can recall it up, do so. Dial it up, and what you're going to dial up is the use of sons and suffering and lambs for the slaughter and da 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 and on and on and on and we'll we'll get into that lord willing <clears throat> from this point on it is not about jesus dying to get us into the family as children that's over from this point on it's not going to be about him dying to get us into the family as children <clears throat> but of us maturing from children to sons, so that we might demonstrate the family spirit in self-giving. 
It is a life of self-giving death which proves sonship and not just first fruits. We'll deal with it. We'll deal with the first fruits on to the end of the, the Feast of Tabernacles here shortly. But I want to say it right here because when you look at the if you look at the feasts, if you look at the whole matter of feast, first fruits is right up there with Passover. Tabernacles is at the end. So our examination of this is not going to be each one, each step, and da-da-da-da, because he's going to try to take you from a child to a son. He's going to mention the first fruit. You're the first fruits. You're the first thing that's come up, but you've just come up. You know, this isn't the, the feast of the ingathering. Hallelujah. Two different things in two different locations in the, in the progression of God. And in our progression, as we enter into his definitions, his explanations, instead of trying to find this on some Denton, Texas, 2015 level. <laughs> I don't know if you even know what I, that means, <laughs> but it means a lot. We're, we're so here instead of here. We're so wrapped up in our little life, and we're trying, oh, God, just show me, you know, we'll come down, we'll cry, and oh, just give me this and that, and da da da, da. And he's going, where's your Bible? <laughs> You're asking for stuff, and I can't talk to you. <laughs> you know? I mean, I remember when we were in Bible school, when you went down to the altar, you went with your Bible. Well, I don't mean just Bible school, the church that we were part of. You went down there because God's liable to speak to you. Actually, instead of us going, hey, you know what I mean? Hey, up there, listen, I got stuff. He's going, well, I'd like to talk to you, but you, you've got my throat turned off. You left my, my mouth back at your pew, and that's why we call it pew. Anyway. <clears throat> Romans 8 gives us the progression from Passover uh, which involves first fruits. We just said that. Look at verse uh, 23, just quickly. And not only they, but ourselves also, who have the first fruits of the Spirit. This is just the, this is the beginning. The first fruits of the Spirit should lead to a groaning for the ingathering. Yes. <clears throat> you thought I was making this stuff up, didn't you? <laughs> And I haven't even got to, the, to, to that little explanation a little more, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. <clears throat> um, but to just, say, to just say this, that the progression as seen through the feast from Passover to the Feast of the Ingathering, that's the, that's the pattern. That's the pattern. There's a big gap in between it. There's stuff, there's meeting God, there's being of God, and then there's nothing but dry season. And you don't hear from God for the greater part of the middle of the year because we're dry and we're out of tune and we're just like those that need to go into captivity. And what what is, the, what is the captivity and the deliverance out of? Well, it's, it's what's coming with the next feast. I mean, it's going to bring us out, and the high priest is going to go through the whole thing on the Day of Atonement, and he's going to step out and go, okay, we're starting again, <laughs> only this time we're going to do it on the eternal basis. It's the pattern. The feast is the ancient paths of God, as always. So it gives us the progression from being an heir of God as children to becoming joint heirs with Jesus as sons. This is the ancient path from being in the family, failing God, then being brought back into his original intention that they never really got at first. 
Now my wording's going to be a little different. When Jesus was in captivity, when Jesus was in captivity, he went through the suffering correctly. The cross. He was in captivity. They bound him, they, they beat him, they did all this. And when he went through the captivity, he went through it right, in the right spirit. He was with the Father. He wasn't just going to go, I'm going to do this right. I'm going to do it right, yes. No, 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 no. You can't do anything in the Godhead or with God or, or of God without it involving Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There has to be a self-giving. You can't be independent in this aspect. You can't. It's impossible. You, you, if the Father had no Son and no Holy Spirit, there would be no demonstration of love as he understands it. This is my beloved son. Oh, he pours it out, doesn't he? Jesus walks around and goes, the words I speak are not my own. They're the Father's. When the Holy Spirit comes, he'll not speak of himself, but he'll declare Jesus. Da -da -da -da. It's, you take that away and you make it just you, and you got just you. And you got no impetus of spirit reality and I don't mean holy spirit reality as much as I mean spirit reality of, of his family you have no taste you, you don't you don't you say oh no I feel the Holy Spirit right now good 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 but if you really, if he's really there, you're going to cry, Abba, Father. There's going to be a witness. See, the witness isn't, you're saved. See, the witness, yeah, you know, I mean, there's the, the, the we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit bears witness with our spirit. What's that all about? He's bearing witness with us. We're crying to the Father. It's this constant way of not me, but Christ, of not about me for my life. But about you. And then that makes him free to be about us. But when we're always about ourselves and we never join, we never become joint. We're just, I'm an heir. I get it all. Thank God. Yee and he goes, you're an idiot. You're not an heir. <laughs> you're a total idiot. You clearly don't have the family spirit slick, you know, <laughs> and yet we, we're just, we're just okay, I'm okay, no, I'm doing good. How can we? How can if the very birthing of this thing, as talked about before this point, where it's nothing but becoming children, is all about this spirit, and describing nothing but this spirit, what did he say? But if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead raised you up, it's, it's all through here. It's just this constant, you know, and you go, well, I can't tell who's doing what here. That's because they're all alike. They're, they're, that's their way, you know? So this is confusing. Not if you understand God. Not if you understand love. God is love. If you understand the core of what this is about, then it can never be about you, and therefore you, you can't make this journey by yourself. And the Feast of the Ingathering Gathering was what? Everybody, and every feast was. Everybody come up here. Except after Pentecost, it was everybody go back home and live your own individual lives in dryness and, and waiting for the latter rain. You know, scratching the, the dry dirt. Well, we're just biding our time. We're not waiting for the latter rain. We're waiting to get back into the original intention of God. And when I say get back into it, I, don't, I mean actually to discover it. The return is to something that's altogether new. It's altogether new. It's Christ, but it's, it's 
the newness of him, not the oldness of the religious figure that we've made this beautiful son of God, that we have conformed him to some sort of an idol in a church or on stained glass or something like that. And I have absolutely no, I mean, we look at, I wish I had my little fan with Jesus holding a little lamb. And we go, you know, precious Jesus, gentle Jesus, meek and mild. He loves me. He holds me. He's after just fixing me. Well, he does. You know, he's, he's, he's not going to turn that into himself. He'll do that. But where are we at in that? And I'll tell you exactly where we're at thinking about ourselves, we're thinking about what he can do for me, we're thinking about, you know, all the things that are contrary to getting you out of the captivity. We say, I'm doing everything right to get out of the captivity. No, you're not. You're doing everything wrong in the sense of that you're leaving out the most important thing, his spirit. And I don't mean the Holy Spirit. I mean the spirit. If you have not the spirit of Christ, you are none of his. Not that you're not saved and in the family, but you're just not his. You're yours in the family. And all of these things, you know, people go, well, Randy, why do you get so riled up? You know, it's just Jesus. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's not just Jesus. It's it's the Lamb of God manifesting, showing by being Lamb. This is what they're like. I am the door. And you enter in through me, and the kingdom will automatically begin to be delivered up. Not to the Lamb, the Son, anymore. It'll be delivered up to the Father. And then God, not the Father, God will be all and in all. That's what it says, and that's where it's going, and that's what's in the heart of God, and that's the plan, and he's, he's done it. Shadow land over and over and over and over and over till it comes to us who are supposed to be living in the real, and we don't have as much reality as the Israel walking around the wilderness. We go, oh, I wish I, wish I could walk into the tabernacle and just see the, the golden candlestick. You know, I'd like to walk into the Holy of Holies. I'd like you to walk there too. Because <laughs> I know what they, where that's going to end up. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> All right. Where am I? When Jesus was in captivity, he went through the suffering correctly. And he was the remnant that came out in resurrection. Because we were raised up together. We, were, we come out of death into resurrection in Christ. So he's the resurrection. He's the return. He's the fullness. He's the high priest that comes out and says, hey, you're okay because you're not there. You know, it's like he comes out, hey, people, you're going to be okay because you're not there. You're here. Now discover that. And they go back to their homes going, oh, good, I don't have sin anymore. Oops, I just sinned, you know. And so we start another year. So it starts all over. And it's just an endless cycle until somebody just cannot stand it anymore. Just cannot stand it. I don't mean, you know, gets a little stirred during the during Kelly's class, I got stirred, or, you know, somebody else is preaching on Sunday. I, I really got stirred, you know. This ain't James Bond, you know, <laughs> shaking or stirred, you know. This is, is Christ going to, is your heart going to pursue him right. with all your heart, soul, strength, mind, might, everything? Or is it going to be okay? Well, I'm, you know, I'm doing this, but, and I'm also doing this, and, and so I'm seeking the Lord too, but it's like, you know, I've got, my, my life is very complicated. You know, yeah, it's full of you. You know, and that complicates it all right there. Just put that to death, and then it's not so complicated. Your heart becomes single. Your eye becomes single. 
your desire becomes single. One thing have I desired, that will I seek after. You say, well, how do you do that on the job? I don't know, I've done it, believe it or not, for years. I mean, you know, when your heart is with the Lord, you'd be surprised what you can do and what he can do. He's, he, I'm not even going to give you stories. I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> All right, so that sentence is, when Jesus was in captivity, he went through the suffering correctly and was the remnant that came out in resurrection unto fullness. Not just in resurrection, but under the fullness. This is the fullness, that he might fill all things. That's the fullness. What's the fullness? That something fill it. What fill it? He. He might fill you and I, that he might fill his temple. Not that, you know, and you see, we, we love, oh my God, we love the story when they, you know, the, we go into the temple and the spirit. The cloud was so thick that the ministers couldn't minister by reason of the presence of the Lord. And we go, oh, God, bring the presence of the Lord into this service today like that where we won't minister today. Folks, that represented the, the, the ark is the Lord, and he's finally in there. And it says when the ark was set into his place, Boom! That's when the, the cloud hit, and that's when everybody was down as if they were dead. We're looking for an event. We're not looking for to see the Lord in his place. We're not trying to see and get the Lord in his place so that it would no longer be about us ministering for God. I mean, I, I believe... Now this, I really believe this. I believe if you really, really have the Lord, you'll never lack for ministry opportunities. I believe that with all my heart. If, if you really have the Lord, somebody's going to want you. <laughs> right? Somebody will go, man, hey, would you come share at our church? You know? And they, you know, and they can look on the internet and go, well, you got all this bad stuff said about you. And then they'll sit down and talk with you and go, well, I sense Jesus. Would you still come? Well, what if, what if your congregation gets on the Internet and checks me out? I don't care. You're going to bring Jesus. That's all that matters. That's all that ultimately matters. But if we don't have that draw, that thing that draws people uh, and, and, and also draws us out unto his ministry, then we have to just make it up as we go. I think I'll do this. Hmm, well, let's do that, you know. I mean, y'all remember when some people thought I was crazy when after, um, it's our boy that was over the, the shelter when he died? Jo when George died, you remember that? Y'all remember that? And, I, and when it was done, I said, when he died and everything, we did the funeral, whatever. That's it, we ain't gonna do that anymore. Everybody went, we had a good thing going. We had a really good thing going. That man had the Lord in that. It wasn't a good thing going. It was the Lord. And when he died, it was no longer going to be the Lord. It was going to be people. It was, it was going to be volunteers. <gasps> oh, the big V. That's what we need. No, no. <laughs> the big J is what we need. <laughs> Jesus. So we just stopped. I just said, that's it. We're not going to do it anymore. And, and those of y'all that have been around a while have seen me do that a bunch over the years. It's not the Lord. We're not going to do it. If everybody gets mad, if everybody hates you or me or the church or leaves or whatever, you know, you go, well, we can't. You, Randy, you keep driving off the tithers. <laughs> oh, we can't survive with the way you do this. We're still here. <laughs> and it doesn't even make sense. It doesn't. Anybody ever look at the offering plate when it goes around? It just doesn't make sense. There is no absolute no way that we should still be going. But what goes, God willing, is what is the Lord. You know, and you keep talking like this tonight, you're going to drive off the people on Skype. 
Is Alana on there? Yeah. Happy breakfast, Alana. <clears throat> and Faf. Faf, I don't, I'm sure you can't see how they spelled your name, but it looks like it's spelled F-A-B, Fab. You are Fab, baby. <clears throat> All right, where were we? So, God, I keep reading this one sentence. <laughs> but, I mean, it, what the, what's the point of going on if we're not going to get it? When Jesus was in captivity, he went through the suffering correctly and was, the, and was the remnant that came out in resurrection unto fullness. Now, here's us. We are what's left in captivity because we can't and don't handle affliction right, especially unjust affliction. Wow. So we're still, we're still the ones in captivity, praying, get me out of captivity. And he's going, go through it right. We're going, no, get rid of it. And he goes, go through it right. And we go, no, get rid of it. If I cry unto you, you said you would deliver me. <laughs> I know that my emotions make all the difference in the world to you and liquid coming out of a part of my face will move you to great length. No, it won't. No, it won't. I, remember, I see your heart. <laughs> He's just going, I, Jesus, I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> You watch this mess. I can't take it. <laughs> All right, you want to hear that last sentence again? After the captivity comes out in Jesus, we are left with what is we are what is left in captivity because we can't and don't handle affliction right, especially unjust affliction. We, oh no, I'll handle affliction, right? If it's holy, if it's for a holy cause, and people are persecuting me because I'm probably the most spiritual in this place. <laughs> then I'll go through it. Then I'll go through this stuff. But if it's unjust, this is not right. No, you're not right. No, this is not right. No, you're not right. So we go, we go, no, I'm going to, I know what's right, and I'm going to stick with what's right, and I'm going to sit here in captivity until God delivers me out of your unjust stuff. And he's going, the Lord's going, that's not unjust stuff stuff as you see it. That's not that person. That's me. I have them act in that way to prove whether you're a son or still a child. Just to, to, just to check your temperature. It's a thermometer. Oh boy. You're still sick in the head. God help us. You know. Because you, you don't have a clue what's going on. You look at, you look at affliction as your enemy. When I tell you that they are workers for you, and you keep looking at the temporal, wanting to get out of it instead of the eternal, and going through it by Christ as a joined heir. So he goes, what am I going to do? Well, nothing. You're going to stay in captivity till something changes. And if nothing changes, I'll bring out the remnant in my son, in the high priest. He won't just do a work to bring you out. He will bring you out in oneness with himself. <clears throat> All right. Where am I? Everything groans for the manifestation of Christ in us as sons. So I guess we should, we should read down now, shouldn't we? <clears throat> for I reckon that the suffering, see it's still talking about the sufferings of verse 17. 
Verse 18, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed where? In us. In us. All right. We thought that glory was simply revealing Christ in us. Didn't we? That glory is revealing Christ crucified in us. Going through the sufferings by Christ. That's the glory that God's after. Now is the hour that the Son of Man must be glorified. What are you talking about, Jesus? The cross. This is it. There's where I'm going to show this spirit. And there is where God's going to get glory. Not out of the resurrection, out of the death of the laid down life of the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb that was slain be honor and glory and dominion and might. Not, not glory to the Lamb that is raised, that is the best ever. No, that is the one that was slaughtered. Glory to the little, little lamb that was slaughtered. To receive glory and honor and power and dominion. For the earnest expectation of the creation waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. There it is. Anybody know what I just read? Everything's waiting for the manifestation of sonship by Christ. That's what it's saying. It's waiting for something to be manifest out of us, which would be Christ crucified, which would be the Lamb, which would be a suffering with Him, meaning not just hook me up, put, put some cuffs on us, and I'll suffer with you. It's not, it's not hooked up, joined like that. It's joined with him in his spirit. Joined air, if so be that we suffer with him. Not handcuffed together, but in that same spirit. In that same lamb. Followers of the lamb. Everything groans for the manifestation of Christ in us as sons. Because we are children, we think that being saved and in the family is the ultimate. But there is a groaning that we don't understand. It is a groaning to come to God's heart concerning being conformed to Christ and to manifest that nature as lambs in trials. You know that's coming over here, don't you? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Okay? But, but what does that mean? It doesn't mean... It, it does... Okay. One of the things that used to bug me about certain... Whether it was certain Catholics or certain people is they always talked about suffering. Oh, like suffering is like... like, like Suffering is virtuous in itself. I don't believe that. Suffering's not virtuous in itself. If it was virtuous in itself, the people in India would be the most virtuous people of all because they're suffering on levels we never even thought of. It's not virtuous. It is just suffering unless we have the nature of Christ and then he, he redeems it. He makes it something. I, rem I can't remember the wording right now, but there's some argument with the Pharisees. Well, which is more holy, the altar or the gold that is made out of it? And they're going, the gold, and Jesus is going to the altar. <laughs> you know, it's always the cross to him, you know. <clears throat> well, what's the gold? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing that makes it special. No. Deity is nothing unless it's crucified deity. You have, to, you have to see that. I mean, you, here's the deal. You see it throughout the, the, um, the tabernacle if you do a study of the tabernacle. It's incredible, it's incredible, it's incredible. It is incredible, this thing I just 
hinted at. It's just so incredible that this is the way God makes his abode. This is the way he makes his house. Anyway. Um, this manifestation is what it's all about. And not merely children crying out a father. One more little sentence here, I guess. <clears throat> the whole process cannot be accomplished except on the basis of what he originally put on the inside of you at the beginning, himself. At salvation, we have no idea. We call him Jesus, but we have no idea who he is. We call him Savior. and for, I mean, the hippies, one of our most famous things, we call him as Jesus is my friend. Uh, we wrote songs like, me and Jesus got a good thing going. <clears throat> no, we don't. <laughs> I was wrong. <clears throat> It was what was worth is it was me and Jesus got a groovy thing going. But anyway, <clears throat> um, yeah. <clears throat> but it's all about us, and it's all. And I understand that because for children, it's all about them. Okay, I understand that. He understands that. But you know, he doesn't want a 26-year-old son sitting there in a diaper and wanting you to warm his bottle for him. And you go, here you go. It's not, it's cold. You know, will you change my diaper? God. <laughs> Holy Spirit, are you up for this? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, this is why you sent me down here. <laughs> this is your reason? You make me have to do the cleanup. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Jesus was the Jew. <laughs> the Holy Spirit wasn't. <clears throat> All right, I think we're going to take a break. <laughs> you think so too? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> All right, let's take a break and we'll come back when the Lord shows back up. Yeah. <laughs>